So last class, right? We were I just started a perceptron. It's like a modeling of you know a neuron, right? And you and you know that, uh, and you know that right? Neurons apparently even in our biological system there are, I don't know, right? Uh, several of them, right? You know, in terms of hundreds of millions and so on, billions maybe, and they all interact with each other, right? And the and the and the idea is that you know all of this started around 1958. Okay, this model of a neuron, which is a perceptron. Even before that, there was something else, but. Uh, but you know we will not worry about that. Let us go ahead with this. So, a perceptron, right, as I was saying, it is a very simple model, uh, but it actually helps explain a lot of things. And in fact, all the things that come later, they are all they have all evolved from this model. Okay, so what it may what I said last time was that you have uh, you have a neuron th that is modeled as follows. So, right, it receives inputs. Right. I mean, you know, even even within our own system, right? That's what happens. So these neurons, right, get get inputs from from say other this one neurons. These by themselves could be outputs of other neurons, but for the time being, just imagine that, right? These are the actual inputs, huh? and you have like x1, x2, right, all the way up to some xn, right? As I said, and these are all kind of right, you know, coming as input to the neuron, and these could by as I said, these could themselves be the output of some other neuron, or I mean, a bunch of neurons. And uh, you have a threshold, right, which is like a theta. So, so this nonlinearity, right, that's where it comes. But then, right, we will see that uh, one is just having a single neuron, right, may only be help, may only help you to solve a certain set of problems, right. You still need to take it to a different level. But uh, then, for the time being, right, suffices to say that you get some y, and where y, where where you say whether a neuron fires or not, right. So that one zero is to say whether this guy is going to fire or not, right. And uh, right now, right, I mean, you know, we'll take it to be a binary value. But later on, right, I mean, this y can also be a real number. Okay, but uh, but then, right, for the time being, let's say that the model is such that you know y. <coughs> so what was it that I had written last time? So y is equal to one, right? Uh, one if uh, summation. Okay, and all these are weighted, right? As as I said last time, w1 to wn. So you take a weighted sum, i going from one to n, and if this is greater than or equal to theta. Then you say you know the output the neuron will fire. Uh, if not, right? I mean otherwise, right? I mean if, if this is like less than theta, strictly less than theta, then you say that uh, then you say that it won't fire. Okay. Now, uh, now using such a simple thing, right? You might wonder what can you do? Okay. So what I'll do is I'll take an example to actually illustrate what you can what you can do with just a single neuron, right? Let's take, for example, a binary valued case. Okay, not that not that a perceptron is actually limited to that, but just for simplicity, right? Let us say that you know you have an OR gate, right? Uh, uh, no, a Boolean function. Let's take a let's take a Boolean function, right, which we want to sort of you know implement, and we can think of it as a kind of a classification problem. Okay, so let's take the simplest of cases. So what I have here is some like x1, x2, and uh, the output is y. So instead of n number of input, let's take a two input the situation. Well, let's say zero zero right as we know should produce an output that we ideally seek a zero, zero one. I think it's one right. I mean I've not done this for a long time, but one 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 and then one one is also one right. That's how you call it. That's the that's the that's the way an OR gate works. Now another way to see it is to kind of draw it on a sort of a plane, and then think of uh, you know these two axes as x one and x two. And mark these points, right? Let's say that right here is uh, here is our zero comma zero. Yeah, it'll take a while to get adjusted to this. And then here, let's say is one comma zero, and here we'll say is zero comma one, and let's say here it is one comma one, right? And I'm actually right uh, deliberately indicating uh, the zero comma zero by circle, and then the rest by a cross. And what you are seeking is some kind of a classifier now. What you are saying is right, you need. It is some kind of a classification. The simpler, whatever right, you can do it in so many ways. But then, right, think of a line. You know, that's uh, that's that's let's say, I mean, right, that's not through the origin. I mean, the way I've drawn it. Okay, let me just uh, know what I meant was this. Okay, so so let's say right. So this zero one, and what you're looking at is something like that, right? A simple sort of a classifier. It can even be a line, okay? Okay, through these two points, for example, it could also have been this, right? Through the through the two crosses that are at zero one comma one zero, because your condition is greater than or equal to theta. Now, as long as you fix a suitable theta, right? You can have all these points lying on one side of the line, the crosses, right? Zero one one comma zero. Two of them could also be on the line, okay? 
they could also be here the other line that I have drawn. So, you have so many options by the way and then 1 comma 1 right they will all come on one side and then your 0, your 0 comma 0 right which is supposed to be a label. So, you can think of these as labels right. So, 0 comma 0 gets a label 0 and then all the other 3 right get a label 1 ok. Now, this is a very very simple problem right and uh, and uh, right, uh, this is how it started. Right? So they started showing that uh, that you can actually implement implement things like this. But in order to understand, right? Uh, okay, what this actually means is we can we can actually we'll let's try to arrive at. So you so right. So eventually, okay, even when you go later, right, as you as you go higher and higher, it'll all boil down to computing weights, okay, and this uh, and and uh, right and this unknown, which is a theta. We'll be later on model. We'll call it a bias and so on. For the time being, right, we'll just call them as weights and and another parameter theta. Right, so, the idea is that if you if you if you want this particular uh, you know sort of a perceptron to be able to model that uh, or function you can also do it for and you can you can try it for other cases. If you wanted to do it then uh, then what it means is you have to arrive at this bunch of weights right in this case you just have to worry about w 1 and w 2 and then kind of a theta right. Now, I will just take an example right, which I have which I have got here. So, so, so right so the so the things are so what you have is for the first condition right what you have is w 1 see this guy right. So, w 1 x 1 plus w 2 x 2. So, if you look at uh, w 1 x 1 is 0 plus w 2 times x 2 right. I mean if you take the first case right w 1 0 plus uh, w 2 0 right. This this you want it to be what do you what do you what do you want want this to be as a condition less than less than theta right less than theta because you want the output label to be 0. And then for the for the next case if you take 0 1 you will write it as w 1 0 plus w 2 1 because x 2 is 1 and then this you will write as greater than or equal to c theta because you want the output label to be 1. Then the third case you will write this as w 1 into 1 plus w 2 into 0 right w 2 into 0 this again is greater than or equal to theta and then the last one is w 1 into 1 plus w 2 into 1 because both inputs are 1 this again is greater than or equal to theta right that is what that is what you would say which then means that from the first one right irrespective of whatever w 1 and w 2 take it is clear that right theta should be actually should be strictly greater than 0 that is what evolves in the first condition. The second one says that w 2 should be greater than or equal to theta then this one says w 1 should be greater than or equal to theta then the last one says w 1 plus w 2 should be greater than or equal to theta ok. Now, obviously, the last one follows right if w 2 and w 1 are each greater than or equal to theta then the sum of course, will be greater than or equal to theta. Uh, then uh, what you can think about is uh, some some theta right let us choose that I have just chosen arbitrarily something ok I have chosen theta equal to 1, but as I said it does not have to be binary and all ok you that is up to you whatever I am just giving it as an example. And suppose I choose right theta equal to 1 and then I have chosen and then right w 1 should then be greater than or equal to theta here as an example I have chosen w 1 is equal to 2 just arbitrarily ok w 2 is equal to arbitrary in the sense that as long as I satisfy these conditions it is ok any number is ok. So, w 2 is greater than or equal to 1. So, I have chosen w 2 to be equal to 1 and uh, theta of course, is 1 right. Yeah. So, I think so the point is right if you have a condition like this right and then if you go back to this diagram and then you have this this let us say this and this right and uh, what do you get. So, so if you kind of if you if you see the if you see the equation right of, of this line. So, you will have like w 1 x 1. So, w 1 what did I choose as 2 right. So, you have got like 2 x 1. So, if you want to draw this line you will have like 2 x 1 plus w 2 x 2 right. So, w 2 is 1 x 2 is equal to theta right which is actually theta what did we choose as 1 right. So, which means that if I if I take my x 2 to be 0 then my x 1 is how much 0 0.5 right. So, which means that you are looking at some point here ok 0 0.5 0 and then if I take my x 1 to be 0 then x 2 is 1 right. So, then that will be like 0 comma 1 which is here. So, you are kind of right looking at a line like we are looking at a line uh, or maybe I should change the color. So, you are looking at a line like oh I do not know I think I can choose the color here it looks like ok. So, right so you are kind of looking at a line like that ok which is of course, passing through this ok it is not very evident but right that is how it is. and. Uh, I mean this is not this is not a unique solution right, but one of the solutions could be this and uh, right you are able to do a classification right. Now, this sort of uh, right uh, this uh, this sort of uh, what to say and uh, no, I am not going to show the other examples leave it to you ok to try something else ok. Uh, 
so the idea was that right so this by itself created some excitement right in the Henderson community and this perceptron model by the way was Rosenblatt 1958 okay so that you get some hang of when this happened right so it's like 1958 okay this is a perceptron model and uh, then right uh, Minsky uh, I don't know the exact year I think it was about four to five years later what they said was uh, right this is all fine but then right think of uh, think of a situation you know, where uh, let me go to the next page huh? hmm. Hmm. where they said uh, take the case, case of a right XR gate I mean we are still looking at m a boolean functions which are still maybe much simpler than the ones right that you can have where a function is real valued right. And, uh, and right now we are only looking at a single output you can also think about a multiple output case and so on.